At this time, we're going to have... I'm going to... God be with so-and-so. Here, we have Paul saying, 
these are some very important things that I want to see because I love these people. And I care about these people. And this is what I want to see in their lives. So everybody, everyone here raised your hand a few minutes ago and said you at least had one friend. Okay? So pray for that friend and your friends. And let's look at how you should pray for your friends. First of all, what he says, he says, be filled with the knowledge of this world. We should be praying for our friends and we should be praying for ourselves that we are filled with the knowledge of God's will. And the reason why he does that, he says, he says I want your whole life just to be uh, uh, just, uh, just totally uh, filled to capacity with understanding what God's will is for your life. The whole idea of that word filled there means that there's no room left over. It's kind of like how you feel after Thanksgiving dinner. Okay, you, you, you're, you're not, there's no, you can't get another bite in you. you you've had as much as you can eat, and, and the, even the thought of getting something else in you is like, oh, you're totally full. And what Paul here is saying, he says, I want my friends, the people who I love, that I want them to be filled with one thing, and that is their understanding, their spiritual knowledge of what God has for them. And, and, and you guys need to have that. We're starting a new school year here. You guys have to understand, particularly you seniors, you have to understand what God's will is for your life. And you say, Jeremy, I'm trying to figure that out. What are you talking about? Well, there are some things that you know that are God's will already. Whether they're for you to drink or whatever you do, do what? All to what? The glory of God, right? So this school year... You know, God has, where you're at in your life, God's will for you is to work hard. Work hard in the classroom. Work hard on the volleyball court, or the basketball court, or the soccer field. But that's God's will for your life. But here, here, here's the reason, now, as we look through this, it says the reason why we're filled with the knowledge of the will, in verse 10, is not just so that we can just do good things, but it says so we can walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. Fully pleasing to Him. See, that's the motivation. Here's the point, guys. If your motivation is to work hard in the classroom so you can get a report, good grade on your report card, or your motivation in the basketball court here is to work hard is so you can have the higher score at the end on the scoreboard, your motivation is too low. Because you work hard in the classroom, and you work hard on the basketball court, for God's glory. Fully pleasing to Him. Because the reason why that's important is because you can sit in Mr. Thompson's class and you can say, man, I forgot to study for this, so okay, one D isn't going to kill me. Or you can be on the basketball court and you can say, one game isn't going to kill me. And is that true? Absolutely. But the motivation is too low. On the basketball court, we work hard, and we train hard, and we do the drills, and we respect the referees, and we respect the coaches, and we respect the other players, and we play extremely hard, not so we win the score, not so we win the game. Yeah, that's good, but it's fully pleasing to God. Do you see that in the text? It's fully pleasing to God. You work hard in the classroom, so you are fully pleasing to God. So here's what Paul was saying to his friends. He's saying, I'm praying for you. I'm praying that you understand God's will so that in doing so you're obedient, not so you get a good name for yourself, but for God to be glorified. If you're a Christian, that, that's your end goal. Your, your, your end goal is God to be glorified. Do you realize that is the reason why you were created? I stand before you this morning, breathing for one purpose, to bring glory to my Savior, Jesus Christ. That is why God formed me. And that is why God made you. So you can bring glory to God. And you have this awesome time, this awesome opportunity to explore God's will for your life, Right now, where you are developing friendships, you are developing your theology, you are developing all this, this is an awesome time for you. Use it for God's glory. Classroom, your friends, athletics, whatever it is, all to the glory of God. 
Paul says, he says, I'm praying for my friends. I want them to be filled with the knowledge of God's will, the knowledge of His will, so there's understanding. So, verse 10, the reason so they can walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. Let me ask you this. Do you really want your friends to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord? If that is your goal, then you will help them to that end. When conversations start going where they shouldn't go, this comes into play. When, when uh, it's easy to pick on the, the nerd or, or whatever, believe me, I know because I was the nerd. <laughs> Some of you are going, why are you saying was? <laughs> um, present tense, I understand that. Okay, It's easy to do that. But if you want your friends, if this is truly your goal, then you're going to be a leader. You know, seniors, you're going to hear this so many times this year. You know, be a leader. You probably already have. Have you guys already heard this? All right? Okay. Well, it's true. You know, some of these kids are, are, are actually looking up to you. Why? I have no clue. But they are. Okay. <laughs> be a leader. This is your marching orders right here. Pray for these students. Okay? And lead them in a way. And then when you see things going in the wrong direction, it's up to you guys. The rest of the students expect the teachers to do what's right. But when you guys say, hey, you know, this is what we're going to do. I want to be filled with God's will and I want our lives, I want our school to walk worthy of Jesus Christ. They'll listen to you. So that is, that is my encouragement to you guys. Now, the rest of you guys, let's say they don't do it. Do you get off? No. You leave. Okay. So here's what Paul wanted his friends. This is what I think you as friends should be doing. Encouraging them to be filled with the knowledge of God's will to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. And what's the end result there? Verse 10 it says, fully pleasing to Him. Isn't it amazing that we can actually please God? This is a way to please God. I don't have time to develop that. Bearing fruit, we're supposed to be bearing fruit as, uh, as Christians increasing in the knowledge of God. Then he says this in verse 11, and, and I'll close with this. He says, may you be strengthened. This is what Paul wanted. He wanted Paul, to, Paul wanted his friends to be filled with the knowledge of God's will. But then he wanted them to be strengthened and with power, with, with the accordance to God's mighty, glorious power, it says. And the reason he says, for all endurance and patience with joy in verse 11 there. That is the reason. Because it, it gives us a glimpse. Paul is saying that you need to be filled with God's power. You need to be strengthened with His might because of endurance and patience with joy. Now what does it tell you? If Paul is saying you're going to need endurance and you're going to need patience, what is he saying? What is he saying to handle? He's saying there's going to be situations that are going to require endurance. There's going to be situations that are going to require patience. And, and guys, you know this. Some of you know this already. That life isn't easy. And life is hard. And there's going to be a time, you know, some of you are excited to be back to school right now, but it's going to be just a, just a couple days, a couple weeks, where you are just going to want to be done with this thing. Some of you are like, they're already, okay? You want to be out of school. You want to be done. Well, this is where you need to encourage one another by the power of God's Word, is you need to say, no, this is where God has me right now. And so I need to be strengthened by God's power for endurance and patience. But notice what he adds to that. He doesn't say, okay, I'm just going to grip my teeth. I'm just going to endure this and get through this. He says, no, with what? With joy. Because you can have joy when you understand that you are exactly where God wants you. And that brings satisfaction. Yeah, you know, I know graduation, getting out of high school seems eons away. And in, in, in a lot of ways it is. But endure in patience with joy in God's strength. Because if you understand, if you understand that you are operating right where God wants you to be, and you are fulfilling God's will, you are fully pleasing Him, I'll guarantee you this, you will have joy. You will have joy. So, Paul's writing to his friends at Colossae. He says, be strengthened, be filled, and what's the result? The result is, in verse 12, giving thanks to the Father. Again, God is glorified. And that's the end result. So, before you is another school year. Minds that matter, I think, is the theme. Uh, a focus on Christ, the mind 
that's committed to Christ in, in, a, in a mind that's guided by the Word of God, let me encourage you to pray for one another. And look through this text. This is how we ought to pray for one another. And be seeking God's will. And be doing it. God's will is not a mystery. A lot of times we, we like to think of God's will like this great spiritual treasure hunt. And we're looking all around for it. No, the scripture is very clear of God's will for your life. Obey your parents, honor authority, respect one another, work hard. These are all God's will. And so just do it in a way that is leading others and encouraging one another. And then in the end, God will be praised. He gives one last thing here in verse 13. At the end of verse 12 and verse 13, Paul reminds them of something. He says, really, the only way this is possible is because you're in Christ. He says, he says, he has qualified us, he has delivered us, and he has transferred us. If you're a believer in Christ, God has made you qualified for heaven, regardless of your sin. That's an amazing thing. My time is gone. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity to spend a few minutes in the text this morning. I pray for these students. I pray that they would pray for one another. I pray that they would lead one another. I pray that their actions would be guided with a pursuit and a knowledge of the thirst and desire for the will of God. And may you reign. And may you be praised. And may you be honored. For it is in Christ's name I pray. Amen. All right,